In this screencast, we're going to look at cost, volume, profit analysis with multiple products. But before we do that, we're going to work through the math of the solution. So let's start off with the break-even equation for a single product. Now, what's important about this equation is that it says that the total contribution margin from, that, from a single product has to be equal to the fixed cost. If we extend the analysis to two products, then what you can see is that the amount of contribution margin collected from the individual products must sum to the contribution margin required to offset fixed costs. And to just be clear about the notation, Q1 and Q2 represent the number of product one and product two sold, respectively. In order to keep the discussion from getting too abstract, we will work a simple numerical example as we're going through the algebra. So in the example, we have two products. Product one has a contribution margin of $20. Product two has a contribution margin per unit of $30, and the total fixed costs that must be covered are $450,000. So let's take equation A and see what happens when we try to solve for Q1 and Q2, the number of units of product one and product two that must be sold. Well, if we try to solve for Q1, as you can see in equation B, we get a bit of a curious result, and that is that the number of Q1 depends on the number of Q2. And we can see this at, by looking at the numerical example as well. Once we plug in the numbers that we know, the fixed costs and the contribution margins per unit for each of the two products, what we end up with is Q1 equal to $22,500 minus 1 1.5 times Q2. Well, in algebra class, we would say that the system was underdetermined. And what this means is there's not enough information to uniquely identify Q1 and Q2. So the question then is, how can we resolve this problem? Well, one way of doing it is to introduce the concept of sales mix. So suppose Apple believes that for each white iPhone it sells, it will sell three black iPhones, in which case we have a sales mix. And that sales mix can be interpreted the following way. That is, 75% of total iPhones are black, and 25% of total iPhones sold are white. So we've introduced a new a variable into the equation, and that is Q without any sub subscripts, and that represents the total number of units sold. So let's take another look at, at the break-even equation and see whether using sales mix will help us out. So we start off with the break-even equation, and now we substitute into the break-even equation the sales mix assumptions. So what that means is that where we had Q1, we now put 0.75Q, and where we had Q2, we now have 0.25Q. And we can do the same thing with our example. And this looks a little bit more promising in the sense that by the time we get to the equation at the bottom, there's really only one unknown variable, Q, as opposed to two, Q1 and Q2. Let's see what happens when we try to solve the equation. So we take the break-even equation in terms of Q and sales mix, and now we solve for Q. Well, it seems to work out okay in the sense that there's only one unknown, Q, but what is this curious thing that's sitting in the denominator of equation D? And this is what we call the weighted average contribution margin. What does that mean? 
it means that it's the average of the two contribution margins, but where the weights represent the sales mixes of the two products. So let's see this in terms of our example. We will start once again with equations C and D, but substitute in the values that we know from the problem, that is fixed cost of 450,000 and contribution for margin for product one of $20 and contribution margin for product two of $30. And when we look at equation D, this looks promising because there are no unknown variables. So it looks like we can solve this. And what we end up with then is a break-even equation, which says that the quantity, which is the total number of units sold, is equal to the fixed cost, $450,000, divided by $22.50. When we work that out, it means that we have 20,000 total units that should be sold. But what we were after, of course, was how many units of product one and how many units of product two. But the sales mix said, well, 75% of the total was product one, so 75% of 20,000, 15,000 units, and 25% of the total were product two, so 25% of 20,000 is 5,000. It looks like we've solved our problem. Just to be sure, let's check the numbers. So once again, we'll go back to the break-even equation. We'll substitute in all the values that we know and see what happens. It looks like product one, of which we're going to sell 15,000 units, will contribute 300,000 in contribution margin, while product two will contribute 150,000 in contribution margin. When we sum them up, it's equal to 450,000 which is the fixed cost that we were trying to cover.